Welcome to Architecting with Google Cloud. Machine learning continues to be applied to use cases across industries. The airlines and transportation industry is no exception. I'm thrilled today to chat with Ksenia Kristina, a machine learning platform manager at Flyer Labs, where her team leverages data and machine learning to help airlines better forecast demand, set prices, and optimize revenue. I'm particularly excited to also have Ksenia give us a peek into the core components of Flyer Labs' ML platform. Welcome, Ksenia, and thanks for joining today. Can you start off by telling us a bit about yourself? Sure. Hello. Uh, yes, my name is Ksenia, and I, uh, I've been with Flyer for three years. So in general, I have about uh, eight years of experience in the industry in multiple domains. And I, uh, but however, I started uh, machine learning and uh, I started working in machine learning only three years ago. And, and now can you tell us a little bit about your company, Flyer Labs? Flyer Labs. Uh, is a company that bringing intelligence to airlines. So we are trying to use machine learning and AI to be able to predict demand and optimize the pricing for the airlines. So we want to make sure that every flight at a takeoff is 100% full in bringing the maximum revenue to the airline. Oh wow, that's great. And you know that that feels especially particularly relevant and important today for the airlines industry. Uh, in the midst of the pandemic and you know, how consumer behaviors changes really, really fast. Um, so now we are here to talk a little bit about machine learning. Could you discuss some of the top use cases ML, ML is applied to? We basically have only one, only one use case for now. So we are taking all the historical data from the airline. We are taking the competitors, uh, con competitors information. We are taking information about future events at the origin of the, dis or the destination of the flight and putting this all into our models and outputting the demand forecasts, which are used to optimize the pricing and deliver this to the airline that are lately, lately used in their production systems. And, and before we dive into that use case and, and how you've architected a platform around it, I think I wanted to dig a little bit deeper into your team and how it fits within the uh, broader Flyer Labs organization. I think a lot of companies today, they might only have one data science team, they struggle to operationalize ML models. Um, could you talk a little bit about your team and the other teams at Flyer that are tackling this problem? Yeah, so Flyer is mostly bit around data science. So of course we have more than one data science team. Uh, we have a data science organization, which my team is a part of. So this data science organization consists of three teams, data science team itself, machine learning platform, and machine learning infrastructure team. Uh, Besides this organization, there is also validation team, which is all which is kind of participate in uh, machine learning, data science uh, as well. But they are they are a little bit apart. But I will talk I will talk about them as well. Um, so, data science team is a team responsible for basically building a model itself. Uh, they are pure data scientists, not uh, trying not to touch any ML ML ops. Then machine learning platform is a team that builds the platform, as you, as you can understand from the name, builds a platform around these uh, models and uh, machine learning. So this is the platform that is used to run inference and production environment, and not only production environment on daily basis, and deliver, and basically use the models on the production system. And then there is a machine learning infrastructure team, which is focusing on empowering data science team and machine learning platform team to do their job. Uh, so they are mostly focusing on tools around all of this. So that's how it looks. And then validation team is a team that uh, that is responsible for uh, testing the models, let's say. They're trying to see how the models are performing in real life uh, over over uh, many days of uh, over many days of being used in the production. So they're trying to val validate how good our models basically are. Great. Yeah, thanks for sharing. I, I think it's, it's great to see that you're really at a maturity level where you have different teams focused on different parts of the life cycle um, and, and, and really optimizing optimizing the, uh, the time to get models into production. And you really have great delegation of duties across teams here. Um, so we are here again to talk about architecting on Google Cloud. So maybe you could give us a little bit of the story around why you initially chose Google Cloud a number of years ago. We made this decision around six years ago when we were still a small startup. Uh, and one of the one of the main reasons probably was uh, Google Bootcamp, Google Startup Empowering Program, where Google gave us a credit and we were able to use uh, use 
Google Cloud platform basically for free for a while. Uh, this was a this was quite quite a big uh, thing for us because we didn't have much uh, much money at the time, let's say. Uh, and but that was, that was not the only reason. Uh, the other reason was that. Um, Google had the great support for Kubernetes, probably the best at the time on the market, and we we really wanted to uh, to be able to use Kubernetes in our solution. So uh, this is reason number two. Uh, why we stay in with Google? What do we like about this? Uh, is still the great great Kubernetes support and uh, BigQuery, which uh, BigQuery is basically we, we the, our hum, whole company runs on bigquery so uh we are tightly bound to this and uh so far it's been been working great for us yeah thanks yeah great, great to hear that story i'm glad you know uh, flyer labs is still on gcp kind of grow, growing with your business um and it you know it, it feels like really that big bet on bigquery and kubernetes you know has, has paid off and is really uh, part of your your core product offering um so uh now let's get into the ml platform itself uh uh, in addition to BigQuery and Kubernetes, what are some of the other GCP services that make up your ML platform today? Uh, sure, we're using Dataflow, we're using Vertex AI, we're using Kubeflow and TensorFlow. Okay, great. So you, you seem to have uh, really adopted some of the industry standards and really focused on uh, open source, which I think is a big core component of Google Cloud as well. We uh, are, you know, one of our main uh, objectives is really to support uh, support the community, uh, especially in the open source space. Um, so now, uh, can you maybe talk about the main components of your ML architecture at a, at a higher level to start? Sure. Uh, three main components are our three pipelines, uh, training data set generation pipeline, model training pipeline, and daily inference pipeline. Great, thanks. Yeah, I think breaking it down like that um, really uh, uh, really makes things a little bit clearer. Um, I think sometimes architecting a broad ML system can feel intimidating or complex for teams, but focusing on how data flows through the system with your three pipeline design uh, really makes it uh, much more understandable. Um, so can you start off with the training data set generation pipeline? Of course, uh, training data set generation demands the most resources. Uh, so how it works? It uses Kubeflow as an orchestrator. It pulls data from BigQuery. It's usually a few years of airline historical data. And then it runs on Dataflow using Beam programming model. As an output, it generates TF records that we later put in uh, Google Cloud Storage and register in our model metadata, store, uh, model metadata store. So this pipeline is very demanding. That's why we run it on uh, Google TPU. And even though TPU is very, very fast, it still takes hours to generate such a training data, data set. Yeah, I think I think it's you know uh, somewhat common knowledge that data preparation is still the biggest task uh, within within a machine learning uh, within a machine learning pipeline. And it's you know it's it's interesting to kind of hear your story uh, re resonate with that. That is it is the most demanding and resource intensive part of the entire pipeline. Um, so now once you have the raw data processed into TF records, what happens then? Can you walk us through the training pipeline? Yeah. Then there is another platform. Uh, there, uh, there is another pipeline that also uses Kubeflow as an orchestrator. And then it takes uh, TF records from this generated by previous pipeline. It takes TF records from Google Cloud Storage, and it takes a model model source code, which is just a Python package. Uh, so it runs in Vertex AI, and as the output, it generates a trained model uh, in the format of say TensorFlow saved model. We put it in GCP as well, in, in Google Cloud Storage as well, and register in model metadata storage. So model metadata storage, I already mentioned it. Let me tell, let me tell you about this. This is our internal tool that we use for, uh, as you can guess from the name, storing model metadata. So it has, uh, it has models uh, with. Uh, it has models with parameters, uh, and the parameters usually include uh, model type, model, let's say, purpose, model ID, uh, for which client this model is being registered, and for which in, on which environment we want to use this model. So it can be a production model, integration model, staging, development model, and so on. And then in this model metadata storage, we also keep a uh, history of our data set. So it also has uh, versions of data set and their IDs. So later you can just reuse by uh, look, look reuse models and reuse datasets by just uh, looking at the meta model metadata storage. 
And thanks for sharing that. I think model registries and uh, model metadata storage is, is really an interesting topic today. I think, you know, when you start with your first model or your first five models, just storing those models in a blob storage is sufficient. But really, when you scale to tens, hundreds of models, really developing a specific workflow around managing models becomes very important in the ML lifecycle. Um, so now, now that you have models, of course, the next important step is deploying those models to run predictions. Can you now walk us through the final pipeline around serving? Uh, yes, so this is our pipeline that we call daily inference. And this is basically, this is actually the pipeline that my team is focusing on. So uh, this pipeline is uh, listening to clients' data. So uh, it listening to pops ups from BigQuery where the client's data is being dropped. Uh, after we collect all the necessary data, the pipeline is triggered. And as an orchestration, we use here Argo, not Kubeflow as it in two previous pipelines. So uh, Argo uh, using Argo workflow, the pipeline is being triggered in and running in uh, data flow as well using Beam programming model. Uh, model inference is pulling model, fi uh, pulling model files from uh, GCP using model metadata storage uh, and the uh, data from BigQuery. So uh, after the predictor <laughs> is executed, we have predictions in form of uh, data in, Big in BigQuery. And then using this data in BigQuery, we can uh, pack these predictions in whatever form our customer needs. So for some customers, we deliver it through the API, and for some customer, we deliver in the form of text files on SFTP. Uh, so on these predictions in BigQuery, we also build some metrics, which, which are later empowering our uh, UI, and where analysts from our airline can go and check and check what's going on <laughs> with any specific client and make some decisions if they want to adjust uh, model outputs or not, and if they want to adjust prices. One follow-up question. Um, a, lot of, a lot of enterprises are looking to future-proof their platforms for scale. So can you talk about maybe how you've designed this platform uh, for the, the scale you expect as you onboard new customers, uh, more models? Uh, yes, we are pretty ambitious and we want to uh, serve more airlines. So of course, uh, scaling and onboarding new customers uh, uh, is a big challenge for us. But how are we solving this? We uh, don't want to be a professional services uh, company. We want, to, we want to have one generic solution that fits all. Of course, it can be configurable, but it's still one solution. Uh, and then when we have every new customer product team or our core, core engineering team don't need to do anything. Uh, we already have uh, we already have the solution. We already have all the pipelines. So we only need to hire customer success team, uh, which needs to take data data from customer from the customer, transform it into our canonical data model, and then using the pipelines that are already created, start training the model on this specific customer uh, data, and then run this model on our prediction pipeline. Uh, so basically, they empower to do everything by themselves, and a core team can focus on other features. Uh, that's how we that's how we onboard new customers. That's how we scale uh, in the um, in the amount of the airlines we can we can onboard. But also, uh, this is not the only challenge with scaling. We of course want to. Uh, we want to broaden our services, and we don't want don't want to only predict uh, demand for economy carbon, for instance. We also want to go further and predict predict premium. We also want to predict uh, demand on luggage and the other services you can add to your tickets and then go to cargo and so on. So this, of course, will result in uh, multiple models. So how we will scale this? Uh, we designed the pipeline in the way that where we just able to add as many models as we need and run them in parallel. So the only thing that we will be facing, the only challenge we'll be facing is resources. But of course, we can always buy them from Google. Great, thanks. Uh, so we all know that ML platforms are a fast evolving space. So curious what future enhancements you have planned. Uh, yeah, we, we have a few. Uh, so first of all, we want to add feature store to our 
to our <laughs> to our tooling. So this is something that would 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 allow us to version our feature to just better uh, manage them, and then uh, also something that would let us not uh, generate them on daily basis, but only append because we don't we don't historical uh, data from the airlines it doesn't change. We only get a new portion of data every day for yesterday. But uh, yeah, we don't need to regenerate the entire history uh, to be able to run new inference. So this is something we've been working on. And apart from that, we also want to be able to uh, do dynamic pricing. And for that, we will need to add some online model into our uh, inference pipeline. So we will be able to request, uh, we, will, we will want to be able to uh, receive a request from customer and then be able to uh, respond immediately with an optimal price. Great, yeah, thank you. Really exciting roadmap, both from a, a new business capability standpoint, as well as the technology technology capabilities of the ML platform. Uh, so thank you, Xenia, for joining us today and sharing what Flyer Labs does and how you've architected an ML platform on GCP. Thank you so much. Yeah, really had a great conversation. Um, it's especially important that everyone learn from each other as ML ops and ML platforms are still a fairly new field. Uh, I personally learned a lot and I know many others will as well. Uh, everyone, if you like this content, please like and subscribe to this channel.